Welcome back, Leadheads, to the Talking Lead Show. This is episode 217. We've got a great show lined up for you guys this week. We're going to be talking body armor, reman ammo, 6.5 Creedmoor rifles, retention systems, and bench made knives. That's right. Great show coming up. If you guys haven't done so, make sure you go back to last week's episode, 216, where we had a great interview with Al Felberg. He was one of the founding fathers of the Federal Law Enforcement Officers Association, FLEOA. And it was a great interview with Al, uh, Nate, and Bill with FLEOA. And then we also interviewed Stacy and Doug Carball with UltiClip where they gave us a little bit of history about their company and their line of products for holster retention. So before we get into this week's show, as always, we'd like to thank the sponsors of Talking Lead. Right on USA, the official optics of Talking Lead. That's right, guys. I am so proud to have these guys as one of our sponsors. Their scopes and red dots are some of the best optics that I have ever laid eyes on, pun intended. Uh, their binoculars are phenomenal. You guys got to check those out. If you've not had an opportunity to go to their website, rightonusa.com, make sure you go there and uh, check out their full line of optics. Like I said, they've got binoculars, they've got rifle scopes, they've got red dots, they've got a magnifier, and they are working on spotting scopes as we speak. So hopefully those will be out any day now. Uh, but I've got their 5 by 25 their Mod 7 on my Andorra Components 308, and uh, it is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, the clarity through these scopes is amazing. Uh, I had that thing dialed in. I was at 300 and, I don't know, 15, 20 yards the other day, and uh, the clarity of the target w from you know fully magnified in at that 25 was still just crystal clear. So you guys make sure you go check them out, and when you do, I know you're going to want to buy something. And we've got you covered, so use that Talking Lead Leadhead discount code at checkout, and you're going to get a nice, hefty 20% discount from the guys at RideOnUSA.com. X Steel Targets. X Steel Targets. The best, most affordable AR500 steel targets on the market today, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Check them out. XSteelTargets.com. Whether you're law enforcement, military, you're a competition shooter, precision shooter, hunter, whatever it may be, they've got a target just for you. And, oh, by the way, if you don't see anything on there that fits your build, then give Bud a call over at X-Steel Targets, and they will custom make targets just for you. So check them out at xsteeltargets.com. Modern Spartan Systems. Optimize your firearms with Modern Spartan Systems line of products. They have gun greases, gun oils, gun cleaners, anything and everything that you need to maintain your firearms, they've got it there at modernspartansystems.com. And they are having a, a bit of a contest. I don't really want to call it a contest, but they're having a challenge right now with their product. So if you go to their website, you get all the details there. And uh, what they're doing is um, they want you to try their product, shoot your gun without it, get their product, put it through the recommended cycle. They tell you everything you need to do there to do this and send in your pictures, your testimonials. They're going to pick random people and give some awesome prizes. So go check them out at modernspartansystems.com. If you're interested in taking part in that challenge, you can get in touch with me at talkingled at gmail.com and I can get you that information as well. Frontier Tactical, the makers of the Warlock multi-caliber system. Check them out at frontiertactical.com. They've, uh, their Warlock system. In a nutshell, what it does is it's compatible with just about any AR-15, uh, mil-spec AR-15, and you're going to replace that uh, standard barrel nut with their Warlock barrel nut system, and then that's going to give you the ability to change your AR-15 out to shoot up to 90 different calibers. That's right, 90 different calibers from one AR-15 platform. So go check them out, FrontierTactical.com. And oh, by the way, if you're in the market for an AR-15, and this appeals to you, they make their own line of AR-15s, the FT series, um, that comes standard with the Warlock system on it. And they are extremely affordable. So go check them out at FrontierTactical.com and tell them you're a leadhead. Doesn't hurt. You might get a discount on one of those. High Threat Concealment. And they're going to be one of our guests today on the show. You're going to hear a little bit more about uh, HTC. 
and their line of retention products, holsters, mag carriers, belt systems. They've got a full line, uh, full line of streamlined, uh, concealed carry options for you lead heads. And, uh, he's going to throw this discount code out. I think we threw it out last week when we uh, announced them as one of the official sponsors of Talking Lead. Uh, again, the code LEADHEAD and you're going to get 15% off at highthreatconcealment.com. Go check them out. And like I said, they're one of the guests this week. So before we roll into this week's show, I just want to give you a little heads up that uh, Benchmade, we were in the same room as Brian Montgomery uh, from Benchmade, and uh, that was one of the more popular booths that was at the FLIOA conference there, and people were in and out of that room all day, every day, uh, playing with his knives. So you're, you're, you're going to hear a bunch of clicking, click, click, click. That's people in the background flipping the knives, opening them, closing them. Uh, so you get used to it after a while, and you don't notice it. Hopefully, but it did pick it up on the microphone, um, on the microphones a little bit. So I just want to give you a little heads up. So you're wondering what the hell is that clicking noise? That's what it is. And I know you guys have been waiting for this. James over at 1776 has just about got our survey finished to vote on the winner for the Leadhead logo contest, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. So Chuck Sanford, Travis Chapman, and Brad Scouton, those are our three finalists. And they are some awesome logos. It's going to be a tough, tight competition. Um, James's guy did an awesome job rendering these. So, uh, and these are just mock-ups. They're not the final, uh, products, but once we picked one, the winner, then we're going to go in and refine it, uh, to perfection. So you're going to have these three logos to vote on. Chuck's was certified lead head. Travis's was lead head bullet. And you'll you'll know them when you see them. And then Brad Scouton was the Leadhead Brigade. So you guys, uh, once we get those posted, I will be I'll make the announcement on our social media, uh, and then you guys go and vote. Uh, we're going to give it you know a couple of weeks before we pick the winner. But this is exciting. I'm excited to get our new logo, our new T-shirts, our new patches going on this. And the winner is going to receive. A t-shirt with the new logo, a patch with the new logo, but they're going to win a classic Talking Lead t-shirt as well, and a $100 gift card to 1776 United. So that's going to be an awesome time. And then I'm going to randomly go through and pick a lead head, uh, whether it's through social media, whether it's through uh, emails, whether it's through uh, feedback from iTunes, is also going to win one of the new uh, lead head logo t-shirts. Oh, yeah. So stay tuned for that, guys. That survey is coming up. It's going to be a survey monkey um, poll, and I uh, want all you guys to take part in that. And then speaking of iTunes, if you would, go and leave us some uh, some feedback and a rating on iTunes, uh, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, wherever it is that you listen to us. And uh, next episode, I'm going to pick the winner of the next Tactical Squirrel Box, and I said I was going to do that from the from the people who leave us um, a rating feedback on iTunes. That'll be announced next week. So, without further ado, Leadheads, let's go ahead and get this week's show started with Point Blank Enterprises, Mid-America Munitions, High Threat Concealment, and Benchmade Knives. Roll that beautiful bean footage, Lefty. All right, let's hear you. Check one. Check two. Mike. You, you got to get up on it. You would say something like that when you mm. check two, check two yourself. Yep, that's that's good. Sounds awesome. <laughs> I sound great. Suck it. There you go. <laughs> nice. She's a, she's a pro. She's a pro. <laughs> Radio pro. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Leadheads, this is Casey Betzold standing in for Marty. Holder, standing in <laughs> even though he's here with me to make sure i don't screw it up <laughs> you're sitting at, at the flioa 24th national conference in st charles missouri at the embassy suites hotel yeah it's nice too and uh i'm sharing a room with the bench made dude brian montgomery sharing a room to broadcast we're not sharing a room at the embassy <laughs> sharing a bed I was oh come on for... man <laughs> you know you want to share a room with me <laughs> and we've also got Adam and Sarah with High Threat Concealment. 
Hello. Welcome, Hi guys. welcome back to the show, guys. In the show me state. The show me. Well, that's right. Show me. Show me. Show me. Show me. So we've not talked to you guys since uh, NRA, have we? That's right. The annual meeting in ATL. Yeah, in Atlanta. Hot Atlanta. Hot Atlanta. That was a hot mess, wasn't it? Yeah, it's been a been a hot minute. <laughs> <laughs> so we are all gathered at the Fleoa 24th. They don't even say annual. It's just 24th. They do it every two years. Every two years. Yep. What do you call something that's every two years? It's not. Yeah. It's not biannual. No, that's biannual. twice a year. That's biennial. 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 You just said anal. So this is Brian's first time on the show. So we're, we got to we got to break him in good. Got to give him a hard. Got to hit him with the questions. Well, you haven't even done that questions? yet. I hadn't hit anybody with a new. If I did that, then the show would be like nine hours long. Oh, that's if true. I did that with everybody. Welcome to the party, Brian. Thank you very much. <laughs> so Brian is with Benchmade. This is uh, you're probably one of the first knife companies that we've had on the show. Outstanding. Yeah, she went best for first. Yeah, the best for first. I've yep. been I've been waiting five years for you to come on. All right. I hope I so. live up to expectations. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys have an awesome knife uh, for the event. We did. We, uh, we work with FLEO. Uh, we do a lot of work with FLEO, actually. The Federal Law Enforcement Officers Association, they're very good to us. We, uh, we try and help them out whenever we can and you know, stress to their members the importance of carrying a good quality, uh, everyday carry knife. And good blade. For, for those that, you know, you, you, my personal opinion on it, I think a lot of people share this opinion. You carry a badge, you carry a gun. You should probably carry a knife and a flashlight. We've taken that a step further, and we, I say that, in the law enforcement community. Um, if you're carrying all those things, you better be carrying an IFAC, too. You better be carrying some kind of a first aid kit. And we make some tools, our rescue tools, which are designed um, for for rescue, just for that, for saving lives. If you, if you can't get to a wound, um, you can't get a clotting agent in there. If you can't get to that wound to, to put a tourniquet on, yeah, you can put a tourniquet on over a pair of... A pair of pants or a shirt, but you, you got to know where that is because right. if you put that tourniquet too low and you're not stopping that flow of blood, you're not doing any good. So we make a, a whole family of tools that are designed just to do that that won't do any further injury or damage to a person, but at the same time stripping away clothing, yeah. body armor, heavy belts, heavy nylon gear. Um, I always give the example, think of a, think of a patrol officer, a deputy in uh, January, and it's cold out. And you've got a base layer, you've got a uniform shirt, you've got some kind of a vest and carrier, plus you've probably got a jacket over the top of that. No if, doubt. If that officer is seriously injured, let's say they've taken a round through the through their soft armor, took a rifle round, or they took a pistol round above or below or to the side of that panel, you got to get all that material off quickly. The clock is ticking. That, that person is going to bleed out without right. attention right away. So carry that. Carry that rescue hook with you. Don't leave it in your vehicle. Don't leave it in your patrol bag. Carry your IFAC with you. Uh, there are a lot of companies out there now making IFACs uh, that are ankle-borne. You can, you can strap mm-hmm. it to your ankle. doesn't take up any real estate on your duty belt or your vest. Right. And you've always got it. That's kind of my pitch for our, uh, our rescue hooks. There. And I've, I've said this numerous times in front of lots of different audiences. It's, it's probably the least expensive product we manufacturer mm-hmm. and i think one of the most important one of the, one that i push the most especially i've got one a crowd like this excellent outstanding just a good uh, pitch with for dc <laughs> in general yeah <laughs> so anyway that's an intro to benchmade we've been around for 30 years uh all made in usa we're in oregon city oregon we uh we make premium products we make great uh knives cutting tools rescue hooks our customer service is outstanding second to none um we've got a great following in the in the law enforcement community in the shooting world and uh, my job is to to grow that and and make sure to more keep people it going. Keep yeah, that not only, ball going. Absolutely. Not only are yep. they here selling knives, they're personalizing every one for free, right? You're not Indeed. even charging anybody for nope. it. Nope. We brought along our uh, our custom portable laser engraver. That and thing is en- cool too. We can engrave names and uh, badges and logos and all kinds of cool stuff. I want to put one of my microphones in there. You think you could engrave that? I can't be responsible for that. <laughs> we, don't, we don't make microphones. What if at I Benchmade, sign so a I, liability I, I, release? And, uh, I can't replace that. I, uh, I burn a hole, burn a hole through it. Yeah. Burn a hole through it. Yeah, yeah, that is a good answer. So uh, your hook that you're talking about, is that something new or is that something you guys have been doing for no, a while? We've been doing those for a while. We've sent thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of those overseas to guys fighting in Iraq and Afghanistan. And I think there are a lot of, a lot of folks alive today. Um, 
because the, the, the right guy or the right gal had the right tool in their hand to complete a mission to save a life. Right. And uh, I, I don't say that lightly. I don't say that to brag. I, I say that because I've talked to lots of folks. I can't go to a military show without some kid. And, and I again, to me, they're kids, you know, 19, 20 years old going overseas fighting for our country. They'll come up to our booth and, and tell us stories about being upside down in a striker and cutting themselves away and getting their buddy out too with one of our rescue hooks. And it's, you know, yeah. it, it's as much as you hate to hear stories like that, it's great to know that our tools are doing what they're supposed to That's do. That's what they're and, designed and they to do. Yeah. When they're supposed to. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. So do you, do you guys have any, uh, I mean, everybody in the world knows Benchmade. I mean, I'm sure all of our listeners, all our subscribers, uh, probably have one, two, three, or ten, you know, of your knives. Um, it's our kind of customers. That's right. That's right. But do you make so many different, you know, knives? Anyway, we do. It's like one of those, I gotta have one of those. Now I gotta have that one. We, what do you we, got new coming out? We, uh, we like to have a variety of options for people to choose from, whether it's somebody who's out hunting or, um, doing bushcraft out, out in the sticks or just, uh, your average everyday businessman wearing a suit and tie every day who wants to have a good everyday carry yeah. a lightweight knife in their pocket. Um, I brought two that I'll show you. One is uh, actually that we, uh, Flioa is making these available to their members uh, with the Flioa logo on it. It's the Freak. It's the 560, and it came out earlier this year. It's what we, it has what we call a dual durometer handle. So you it just has call it the Freak? The Freak. The F Freak. F R E E K. The Freak. You like it. Um, it is quickly becoming one of my favorite knives, one that I carry actually quite often. It's got a little bit larger blade than yeah, our Griptilians. I would say it's beefy looking there. It is. At the same time, it's pretty lightweight, and it's um, not too expensive. It's right around, I think, 140 retail. Okay. Um, it's got premium steel, S30V steel, which is kind of becoming our go-to. It's got great corrosion resistance and edge retention. It's a, it's a really good solid steel. Um, our axis lock comes with a few, a couple different blade variations, satin, black, serrated, non-serrated. Um, feel free to pass around. Everybody can uh, have a look at it. Yeah, cool. Well, thank you. Um, so are these the ones that we did with the This is the, the one coin? that, uh, yes. Okay. So Fleo is making available to their members to, for purchase here at their events. Very nice. And so we're increasing. We got a heck of a deal then. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to go buy a couple more of those then. I'm not going to tell people what we paid for them, so they'll just get mad. It was a good deal. It was a great deal. It, we, it, it's something <laughs> we did with Flioa um, to help raise money for their foundation. And so this is, for, for your listeners who work in law enforcement who have probably belong to a union or association, federal employees don't have that luxury. They mm. don't get to collectively bargain their contract, and if they're involved in a in a serious use of force or a shooting or um, injured on the job. They don't have the same protections and um, things in place that uh, your average copper might across the country, uh, state and local guys. So mm -hmm. FLEOA is there to assist with that kind of stuff. So if, the, if, a, if, a, if an agent is involved in a serious use of force, officer-involved shooting, something like that, they can call their FLEOA rep and get some legal assistance, mm -hmm. um, get some assistance for the family. If an agent, you know, God forbid, is seriously injured or killed in the line of duty, FLEOA is there to uh, assist with all, all kinds of things with regard to helping out the families and things like that. So great organization. We love working with them. We love, you know, yeah, awesome helping these guys out. So um, anyway, that money goes to that FLEOA Foundation to, to okay. assist those guys. Very good. Yeah. So I'm looking at your freak. Um, Super lightweight. Super lightweight, nice. hardy, big hardy blade on this thing. Yep. Um, the grip, what did you say? was? So it's got two different materials in there. It's got a hard plastic in the center and then that kind of grippy, softer mm -hmm. rubber on the outside. We call it dual durometer. I don't know who came up with dual the term. Dual durometer. It sounds really cool when we say it. <laughs> <laughs> the freak in the dual durometer. What yep. are the, the holes for? Uh, on the bottom there, that's okay, a lanyard that's so you can hole. Switch it over. Uh, okay. Yep, yep. So that's a, the holes for the clip. For the clip. Screw the clip in. So you could put an extras. ulti clip on this thing. Um, I have not tried it yet, but I just I met the, the folks from ulti clip today, yeah. and uh, they gave me a sample to take home. So we're gonna you know take a look at it. Yeah, you definitely. I mean, they're a little big. They'd have to make a smaller one, but they could do it. Yeah, sure. Heck yeah, heck yeah. So this is the freak. This is new. Yep. For this year. Yep. Okay. And this is the pro. I'm holding a prototype here, guys, because it says it on the blade. Prototype December 2016. Yep. 
They, uh, we launched it at SHOT earlier this year. Um, the next one I have is something we came out with just, I think, two weeks ago. And this is, we're calling it the bug out. This is an ultra lightweight, everyday carry. Um, we made some modifications, put a brand new clip is the first thing you notice. It's a shorter clip, mm -hmm. lighter weight. It's got some titanium accents instead of uh, steel. So the thumb stud is titanium. I believe the axis bar and the barrel spacers are titanium. Cut and weight. So for the, that lightweight, minimalist, hiker, backpacker, camper, um, this is a great option. Again, S3V steel, real solid steel. But at the same time, it's big enough to be an actual everyday carry. Keep it in your pocket. Use it for what you need to. It's not something that is too small for your hand. I really like it. That uh, I, I think that's going to become my uh, my new everyday carry. It's a it's a manual opening access lock. It's just a cool knife. Comes in uh, kind of a royal blue color. I've been uh, bugging our product guys to come up with a a black version for the tactical market. I'm sure. Is that Hopefully. the only color it comes? Right a, now, that's it. Yeah. So like a cobalt blue. Yep. Kind of, kind of going after that REI crowd, the uh, you know the outdoor the hipsters. Yeah, yeah. The outdoor well, hipsters. We're, we're from the Portland area. We're kind of yeah. comfortable with that. You're kind, term. Of, yeah. kind of a hipster. Yeah, yeah. And what's that retail at? That's a good question. Okay, I'm going to say it's that new. It's so well, new. Well, it's so, so new. new. I, I, it's not in the catalog yet. So it's a mid-year release. I think uh, 130 or 140 retail. Okay, with the titanium on it. That's not yeah. bad. Yeah. Wow. So we're passing around the table. Yeah, super a good, lightweight, a but at, at the same time, it's still really stout. Solid knife. Had that to try it in my pocket. Well, what would you think? You almost left uh, it there. I saw him. <laughs> I, like the, I like the abbreviated clip. You know, it's nice. The shorter yeah. clip? Yeah. 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 I find that I get my shirt and things caught on my, my clips. Yeah. My knife yeah. clips and Seat belts. flashlight. Yeah. Yeah. They're always catching something on there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that'll I'll definitely cut down on that. Crazy light. It is. And what what was the blade still, did you say? S thirty V steel. Okay. S thirty V. Yep. Same as the freak. The yep. freak. Freakonomics. Very cool. I like that. I like the color too. I mean that's different. But, you know, like anything, I mean, you guys are probably going to come out with a bunch of different colors, so you'll... Don't know. Not my decision. I hope they do. I hope we get a black one with a black <laughs> blade black. so I can tell it to all these cops because everyone has a green guys one. I mean, yep. if you're going for the hipsters, you got to have green. you got to have, you know, yellow. you got to have red. Green. Just green. see why not. You know? So, it's a fashion thing. It's got all those fashionable traits, and they call it fashion plates. Fashion plates comes with 15 different plates and eight coloring pencils, paper not included. By Tomy. Exactly. Yeah. Fashion plate. So, so that's your two two newest offerings? Yeah. What do you got in the works? Anything in the works that you can talk uh, about? We got all kinds of stuff in the works. None of it I can talk about. <laughs> we got SHOT Show coming up. SHOT is our big, uh, like everybody else in the industry, that's when we release everything. And we've got uh, a number of things. Coming um, for SHOT? Say that again. I'm sorry. You got a number of things coming for SHOT? Yes, indeed. I'm taking pictures here, so just don't let me interrupt you. Put, no. Put that up here. Let me. Put it like on top of that right there. Yeah, shot show like everybody else a big deal for us. We, uh, for me personally, and for everybody else, it's kind of a grind. It's a week long. You know, it's, I, I call it one long day. There's not a lot of sleep involved. Right. But you know, it's the one time of year you get to see everybody you know from around the world, from from Europe, Australia, Asia, from all over the country, and it's just it's a it's cool to see everybody and catch up, and then you know. You get to catch up on your sleep the next week when you get for home. Two weeks, yeah, exactly. So high threat concealment. You guys do gun holsters. And you do the belts. You, um, do you have knife holsters? We don't. It's a. It's an interesting. Is there a question. demand? They're about to now. Well, sounds like there is a demand it, for it. It's kind of a dirty word around uh, the HTC shop because we used to do custom knife holsters and. You know, over time, what we began to figure out pretty quickly is they were a really good way to throw money out the door. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, you look at just the huge variety that there is across the market. Uh, you know, whether you're and most of the guys coming in were you know had really nice fixed blades. Yeah. Um, you know, particularly if they were a unit blade or something that was uh, had a lot of intrinsic 
you know, sentimental value to someone, mm-hmm. then we were you know, having to keep up with them in the safe. And just because somebody says initially that they don't care that it's going to take six to eight weeks to for that sheath to be made, <laughs> right. two weeks later you're They're calling getting you. <laughs> phone calls to see what the status is. So we uh, we stopped doing that. <laughs> and we you know we get asked just wasn't that worth the headaches right it wasn't we get asked quite a bit even still you know if we're going to go back to making custom knife sheets and you know, for now at least i'm you know i'm thinking that you know yeah. that's the bottom line we do um you know much like uh you know brian and the good folks at Benchmade, everything <laughs> that you know goes into our products and Every uh, you know, every piece of the raw materials is all sourced domestically here in the good old U.S. of A. Yeah, baby. And America. That, that's right. <laughs> and, and it means that you know it's not a you know it's not a bargain product to make either. Um, and folks, generally speaking, don't have a problem paying for that either. Yeah. But you know, we found that it was uh, it just wasn't a money making uh, thing getting super custom with each every individual because we've got to have the knife mm-hmm. um, if it's going to be for yeah like you said sheet. especially with the folders there's bazillion different kind of shapes and sizes and right and you you also run the risk of you know one of our techs you know accidentally dropping you know a one of a kind you know custom fixed mm-hmm. blade that somebody's very yeah. fond of you know, on the uh, on the concrete shop floor, and you know, there was yeah, some liability. Not that we ever did that. Um, I was going to say, you, literally, you never like happened. You speak from uh, experience there, <laughs> but it was always in the back of my mind that that could happen. That was going to happen. Yeah, with somebody's you know unit blade or you know some. Next thing you know, we got some guy from CAG or Dev, you know, hunting us down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you don't need that. You'll Nobody never hear him that. coming. Absolutely. Yeah, nobody needs that. But we've had uh, you know an exciting year. You know, we've got a lot going on behind the scenes, and you know some of it's uh, you know more exciting and tactical than you know than other other things, other products. A lot of new stuff in the pipeline uh, in time for for you think you can talk show. about. Yes, as a matter of fact, some right. of it. Uh, Finally, somebody will talk about something <laughs> from Shot Show. Well, we can we can build a little bit on a lot of what Brian was talking about, and you know, we've always been and you know, huge you know, vocal proponents of training, training, and more training. But particularly you know, where we tend to see um, in the industry a big gaping hole, oftentimes is with the medical side. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we recently pulled together you know a rather simple product. Uh, based on a request from our local law enforcement guys uh, for a, or it was originally called uh, Active Shooter Bag. We very quickly you know, changed that to a first responder bag. Okay, um, yeah. A, a sweeping you know, marketing <laughs> push there. <laughs> but the concept was very simple. They wanted an easy-to-use, um, highly visible um, bag that contained enough uh, medical components um, you know, so that you had a multi- multiple casualty IFAC available in the cruiser yeah. um, at all times. So in the event of whether it's an active, active shooter or, you know, a traffic-related Yeah, uh, mass injury. accident or something. Yeah. So you've got everything you need in the bag to take care of you know, your, you know, your major life-threatening uh, medical conditions there, open pneumothorax, um, you control the bleeding, multiple tourniquets, uh, hemostatic agents. Um, so that's something that's you know, cool. pulled Very together cool. recently. So this is, a, is the bag going to have all that stuff in it, or is it a bag to put that stuff in? It is. It comes you know, fully stocked with all oh, the components. Nice. You know, we built it sort of to order for the customer for our local uh, police department there in Newport News, Virginia. And, you know, it's also available, you know, now on our website for our customers. It's a great bag to have mm-hmm. in your vehicle, you know, particularly if you, you know, if you've got kids. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. it's, it's one of those things that everybody's, everybody's really hot to try to strap a gun to them. Right. And, you know, walk around and say, I'm prepared and, for anything that comes along. But, you know, are you prepared to save your family in the event of a traffic accident? If somebody right. T-bones you at an intersection, you have somebody, um, you know, that's got a, you know, that's got an arterial bleed. You know, do you have a tourniquet on you in the car? Um, and, you know, having a personal IFAC on you all the time is something we certainly believe yeah. in because it's much more likely that, you know, we're going to have an accident of that nature in the course of our life, then we're going to be in. Odds are you going to use that bag before you're going to use your gun. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, that goes back to what we say with, with firearms, too, is you got a firearm, you need to learn how to use it. Yes. So you need to get training. So same thing with you know this med. Just because you got the med kit, if you don't know how to use it, it's not going to do any good. And good guys right. get holes in them, too, you know, as much as we, w- we would hope it 
and it doesn't happen like that. Yeah. You know, good guys bleed as well. Well, we were just at a we were just at a dealer event this weekend in um, Arizona, and they were shooting on the range, and had a double feed and blew the gun up, stuck oh. shrapnel in his neck, and oh. luckily he had Ron there. As na- trained oh, Navy I? SEAL to deal with yeah. the me- the medical stuff, but wow. you know if they didn't have that med kit there, you know it's he didn't ha- he didn't hit the didn't hit the carotid yeah, artery, he didn't hit the didn't carotid, hit the artery. which is good, but but uh, you didn't know you didn't know right away, and they could have just as easily. So you know any anything with the shooting sports, um, you got to have it. It's Accidents just crazy happen. not to. Yeah, it's absolutely, just crazy not yep. to. Absolutely. And, you know as much as you know, we should be proponents of and you know, getting that firearms training being competent and you know confident you know with your level of skill at arms you know all of us need you know, that medical you know medical training as well from somebody qualified yeah for, and you got to be trained for it too just for, having it isn't enough absolutely for you know for casualty care in the field you know in less than ideal conditions you know so we can cover down you know keep them alive until the professionals get there yeah absolutely i mean there's probably not been a year that's gone by that driving down the road that you don't see an accident. I mean, I can't count how many I've seen, you know, this year alone. Somebody wasn't already there. You gave the opportunity to go and help somebody like that. But right. so the odds are you're going to use your medical, your med kit by far, you know, outweigh any time you're going to use your gun. Yeah, Ray. You just had Ray on from Mid-American Munitions. Right. They were in the Montana event this summer, and they were headed home to Missouri, driving from Montana to Missouri, and came up on a motorcycle accident that happened basically right in front of them. And Ray's wife is a nurse. And they had, I heard med- about, they had yeah, some somebody, medical stuff, and yeah. they 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 kept the guy alive till the helicopter got there. He would have not survived if somebody not had something on him, an ability to to do that. They had to life flight him out of there. So, got to have it on you. Yeah, just just having a tourniquet, you know, could save somebody's sure. life. Absolutely. So you guys have that available on your on your website now? It is. It is up on the website and available as we speak. Okay. And we've got... Uh, and what's it called? The first responder bag? First responder bag. Okay. And nice. you, we've got some other uh, you know, other tactical coolery you know, that's, uh, coolery. that's relatively new. Yeah. Uh, one of the things... Do that, tell. Do tell. Let's see. We've got... One of the things that we had actually given folks a sneak preview of at, at SHOT Show is now available on the website and in production as well mm-hmm. is our... Uh, you know, again, a lot of what... A lot of the new things that you see coming out, you know, at our shop are typically driven by customer customer demand. You mm-hmm. know, uh, solving a problem for you know one of our existing customers, and this is one of those products. It's our uh, you know our M4 mag stacker. Uh, so it's it it serves kind of two purposes. You know, one is for folks that you know, wanted to double up on the available pistol ammunition on their belt, but not give up. You know, having two rifle mags, mm-hmm. um, so it fills that purpose rather nicely and stacks. You know, an additional M4 mag. You know, outside the uh, outside the components that are running along the waistline. Okay. Um, so so instead of side by side, it's sticks one in the middle. One in the middle. Absolutely. Okay. Um, another fringe benefit of the product is, and what we're learning as we get more uh, you know, get more female shooters and instructors out there, um, is. You know, when we're uh, we're trying to you know trying to meet the needs of women shooters, and it's it's not the same as working with uh, you know, what we what we typically throw around us as uh, as men. Mm-hmm. And what we're finding, particularly with a lot of very slender women, is the profile of our typical low profile system, or even our uh, you know even our more simplistic. Uh, quick response system is it tends to take up a little more horizontal real estate than mm-hmm. they would prefer. So you've got the components pushing forward of the points of the hip, you right. know, coming together closer. So if you've got you know, a gal with a you know, 26, 27 inch waist or smaller, that can be a problem with them. So what this yeah. allows them to do as well is carry the same number of components as their male counterpart and stack that extra rifle magazine so they can nice. still have yeah. two pistol mags, two rifle mags, and not have their gear, you know, pushing past where they would like to carry it yeah. on the belt line. So that's uh, so that's up and available now, too. Okay, um, very good. What else you got? We've got our Evo mag carriers. Or also Evo? Evo. Mm-hmm. Is that the one I saw out there? That is the one out there on the table. Okay. You know, we were... You know, caught a little bit flat-footed. We went to the uh, NRA Carry Guard show in Milwaukee, so we've got a bunch of bunch of cool guy stuff on a pallet right now somewhere in a truck. <laughs> somewhere lost. That's right. So we had to 
you know, we tried to scrape together some goodies and you know, get out here for the party. I right. mean, support, support. So Fleo. talk about that. It's a single. It is a single magazine carrier you know, to order based on what you're carrying. You know, they're adjustable tensions. So it'll cover mm-hmm. you know a, a range in some cases of uh, uh, pistol magazines, but they can be set up and configured to carry either inside the waistband. Um, you know, appendix or strong side and, or also OWB, you know, as a belt mounted, you know, single mag carrier. Right. So that's Why am I just now hearing about this? That is, because <laughs> it's new. It's brand, it's brand, brand new. new. I can't wait to get my hands on it. Well, and we, you know, we have really, uh, when we first started out, you know, when things were, things were much simpler, just a couple of guys jumping up and down on a foam press, uh, in Afghanistan, <laughs> you know, we had single mag carriers and, if you look out there on what's available from the other custom Kydex guys out there, I mean, they're typically made, you know, to a specific magazine. Right. You know, for a Glock 19, for a CZ 75, et cetera. Yeah. Um, so what we, what we ended up doing there rather quickly when we really started blowing up and doing a lot of the, a lot of the modular belt systems is, we sort of went straight to the dual mag carrier. It made it a lot easier to do like a more generic mold that would work and accommodate a wide variety of pistol mags. Yeah. And always planned on coming back to the single one, but doing it, uh, you know, doing it a little more sophisticated to where it would not be limited to just a single, you know, particular magazine. And that's right. what we've, what we've kind of done here. Um, so there's still ranges, you know, there's wide variances in the you know, thicknesses of the different pistol magazines out there, especially when you jump from like a polymer coated magazine, like a Glock down to like a SIG P226 magazine. So mm-hmm. there are, you know, you've got a, a model that'll cover you know, the overwhelming majority of your metal body double stack magazines and then one for the Glock series. And your single stack mags, et cetera. But it's, it's nice to have the flexibility to run it. I, I run them a lot at our local pistol matches. You know, I'll carry one inside yeah. the waistband appendix and one on the belt. Um, but they're, uh, definitely a handy feature, something you can take on and off very quickly. You right. Know, if you need to stow kit in the car. But yeah, brand spanking new. We've had, uh, had folks asking us to do single mag carriers for, for a while now. Very cool. And those are available now? Those are available. You go on the website and get those? Awesome. awesome. Yeah. Love what? talking about stuff that's on the website. <laughs> and what, yeah. what are those, what are those uh, uh, retailing at? And they are retailing at 38 and 43 Yeah, 38 and 43 dollars. Thank God Sarah's here. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's why you bring her, right? That's right. The boss. Uh, she's got all, she's got all the important information. You know, okay. I just spit out specs. And, uh, mm-hmm. and for our lead heads, who are listening? I'm glad you brought that up too, because that is something we forgot to do when we were in Hot Atlanta. Bum, is, bum, uh, bum. Is throw out that uh, lead head appreciation code there. So if you go to highthreatconcealment.com or htctactical.com, all the lead heads out there can save 15% all day, every day on your order by plugging in the code lead head. Perfect. There it is, guys. Leadhead. <laughs> Brian Shake, we're like, Brian, how about you? You want to stuff up with a discount code? No. <laughs> Sorry, Brian. Uh, that was the bus. Uh, Leadhead discount code, just like, just like anywhere that you guys use that. Uh, High Threat Consumer has set you guys up with an awesome discount. 15% off. Go get one of those, uh, uh first responder bags. It'll be perfect for that. So anything on the website, it's good for, right? Absolutely. With, uh, there, there is, Going to be one exclusion and one exclusion, and that's going to be on like our our IFACs that go on the low profile system and everything. We we offer them stocked and not stocked, and the medical components are really you know we we don't mark those up. Right. So there's there's very few items on the website that are immune from discount codes, and that just happens to be one of them because okay. we don't we keep we keep a nominal stock of those for convenience for that the customers. Sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. And that's only if you purchase the medical supplies on their own. If you're purchasing them in combination with any of our, um, with the block kit or something else, then you, the you get the discount code. Discount code. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Very good. High threat, give the website again. And it's high threat concealment, all spelled out, unfortunately. <laughs> .com, or if you want to save your fingers a little bit, a little bit of time, htctactical.com will get you there as well. 
Okay. Very and, good. And you know, be sure to check out. You know, we're always adding new models to all of our flagship products from our Vantage OWB holsters. There's always new, you know, light combinations up there as we're keeping up with what our friends at Streamlight and Surefire are, mm-hmm. are bringing to market. Um, as well as, you know, we've added more light bearing IWB models for our Spectre. IWB now, are you guys holsters. still running that NRA deal that you had on the the Spectre holsters with the the light? Those doing are, a holster and a light together? Those are long gone, I'm afraid. But oh, we, yeah, man. we did have a really awesome that deal going at deal. NRA with the, because uh, our, our buddies at Enforce had the new APL compact, the APLC out. And we had a right. holster light combo deal going there for a while. Um, great light, um, great light, great to holster. See a lot yeah. of a lot of customers jumping on, uh, you know, jumping on the APLC. You know, it comes flush with the end of the barrel on a Glock 19. Um, so we've got uh, you or, know, that's in or 23 the, or 23 yeah, <laughs> right. custom right. custom 23. Yeah, the old uh, the old talking lead. Um, what are they calling it? Templar Knight. Yeah, the, yeah. Knight's, uh, Templar. yeah. Knights Templar. Knights Templar edition. Yeah, who did that one for you? Uh, that was um, Danny at Pack Arms. That's right. Did that for good, me. Good looking pistol. Yeah, he did some nice cuts on it. I've been carrying one of their holsters for almost a year a now. Maybe yeah, yeah may, maybe before Shot Show last year. And uh, I every day I have a I mean I have a bin of, of very lonely holsters that don't get used anymore. <laughs> awesome. Um, <laughs> I'm having a yard sale when I get back, <laughs> and I've I've probably got ten holsters yeah. that that are going in that. I because, think yep. everybody inevitably ends up with a drawer of you know, kit, particularly holsters, yep. over the years. And I don't know what it is, why we can't throw them out. I mean, I've still got them like a bunch of You never of know when you might need it, you know? You might need it for a it. buddy. You, know, you can't give I them never your holster. Them. No, I love, the, I love my HTC. I love it. And the biggest thing for me, obviously, the retention. It's I, I carry one of the inside the waistband. And, yeah, but the mainly it. it is the donning and doffing of the entire uh, unit. So that with the, you know, the gun and the holster, so I can go right straight from my... Waistband into the safe and and back on in the, you know the next day and it it's it's so convenient so nice but at the same time such good retention and uh, and concealment it's so comfortable I love yeah. it I, I I literally use it every day. Now you do appendix carry? No, nope, I do uh, call it kidney carry actually. So kidney carry. The, I'm left-handed so I'm in about the eight o'clock position. Okay. So when I, I do the old uh, pinkest style. You know. Yeah. I'm appendix. right there by the junk. <laughs> yeah, that's that's me these days. Yeah. You know, if it's anything thicker than you know, maybe a 1911 or a single stack pistol, you know, my, all this city miles on this body, I can't tolerate a double <laughs> stack behind the hip for any length of time. I've got to do it for the pistol matches because they don't let you carry appendix. But yeah. you know, after that, I'm typically walking around like an 80 year old man for a couple of days, <laughs> which is pretty much any that's me any brother day, yeah. <laughs> that's, but that's a lot me. of a lot of folks don't uh don't know it but even you just our iwb line in gen, in general the entire specter lineup was you know, re-engineered not all that long ago as we were you know last year's shot show mm-hmm. um you know everything's been you know, re-engineered with a focus on getting more precise on the capture points and you know basically staying off the areas where you don't need friction and rubbing yeah um you know that's that's really been you guys do a good job at that keeping them minimal yes sir you know you don't have all that extra material sticking out you're sticking up so that's what i really like about your holsters and it makes it easy for the appendix carry because you don't want a lot of you know crap down there no no more than you have to (laughs) right and they're and most of the most of the stuff with your double stack autos or you know, more often than not, now we're going to be uh, red dot compatible you mm-hmm. know, right out the gate. Yeah. yeah, I'm not running a red dot on mine. But, uh, it takes some time and yeah. some some dedication. I mean, guys that get really proficient, you know, any level of proficiency really with your iron sights, you switch over to you know an RMR or a Delta Point Pro. It's going to slow yeah. you down at first, and it it took about six months of you know sticking to it. Yeah, before I just I, before carrying it, kind of it click. you know, having that extra, you know, material sticking out, carrying it, I just, I just don't see, you know, doing it. Now, a competition shoot, something like that, you know, maybe. Right. You know, that would be what, open class that you could run yeah, that I in? Yeah, in fact, IDPA had a you know, big rule change you know, back in July, and I think everybody was disappointed that they didn't have... You want know, an open class for optics at a time, and obviously yeah. you get into that's that's really the only 
you know, pistol shooting sport I have any firsthand familiarity with is the ID. You know, we we don't even have a sanctioned match. You know, in our little town there, it's just a practical pistol match, and we shoot right. it under IDPA rules. Um, so I'm a I'm a newbie when it comes to that kind yeah. of stuff. So what do you carry? Uh, I carry a Glock 23 or a Glock 27. Go between the two. So my I, man, I, I, I have all this 40 uh, ammo. I've got 40 magazines. I got two 40 guns. I'm not switching to nine millimeter. And and everybody in the man. world is nine millimeter, nine millimeter. I'm like, my man. I'm I got 40. 40 I'm sticking with 40. I, carry, I carried, carried it on 23, duty 23, for 23. years. Yeah, and it's something I've stuck with, and it, it works for me. I don't think I would save that much in in size and weight by switching a nine millimeter. I'm used to shooting yeah. a 40. Um, Anytime I'm teaching new students and, and talking about that, I was, you know, kind of stress that as an option, you know, to start with at least it, that the, the ballistics for a nine millimeter have evolved to the point where it's, it's a, it's a great round now. It's a great defensive carry round. Yeah. It um, is. I just don't have a reason to change. I, you know, just, they're still making 40, so I'm great shoot deals it. out there on, <laughs> yeah. on 40 ammo too right now. Is I mean, there? Absolutely. Well, with all the, with all the police departments going back to nine, it's well, actually right. making 40 a lot mm-hmm. more affordable. When yeah. back when the big nine millimeter ammo crunch hit, I mean, you could still find forty Smith and Wesson on the on the shelves most places yeah. as well, at least around our area. Yeah, now you can find anything. Both. You can find anything in our area. I mean, it was all gone. Yeah, I think forty was the only thing we had left on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got the new stuff going on. You guys got the two knives, bench made. Got give a bunch us, of new stuff. Give us your website, Benchmade. Benchmade.com. Dot com. Can yep. they go there and get the knives, or they got to go through a dealer? Everything is available right now. You can go find a dealer. Uh, we do have a dealer locator. We love to support our dealers. Uh, just punch in your uh, zip code, and it'll it'll tell you who's in the area. Um, or you can go straight to the website either way. In fact, on our website, we have a little program called Credit My Dealer. So if you uh. go buy a knife from directly from Benchmade, you can enter in your where you would normally buy That's your cool. knives and uh, your Benchmades. And we will we will give them a commission on that sale. So we we take very good care of our dealers. Yes, you do. Um, as well as our customers, of course. That's a great so idea, that's man. A great program. Yeah, that's yep. good info. I didn't know that, Brian. Yeah. So um, that way, as far as your prices go, you can you can compete with your dealers. I guess. I mean, you're not really competing with them we, at that we point. We don't right? compete with our dealers on price. You'll actually probably get a better deal from, from your, your from your dealer. Um, we we sell it, you know, full retail on our website. Okay. And, uh, our dealers can uh, can go a little bit below that, um, so you know, check it out. Go to Benchmade.com, find a dealer. Uh, you can find an LE dealer if that's something you're mm-hmm. particularly interested in. And, um, our Premium Plus dealers have a really good selection of of uh, options for you. But uh, now, do you guys offer military law enforcement discounts? We do. We offer military law enforcement discount on the uh, on the website, and then we also have our law enforcement authorized dealers, where you can look that up, and you'll get the same pricing through our, our what we call our lead program, our lead dealers, LEAD. LEAD. Yep. Right. Lead. Yep. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's lead, baby. Talking lead. lead. <laughs> Well, guys, thank you so much for taking the time. Awesome. Appreciate it. Thank you. I Thanks think, for having us. I think us. they're getting ready to wrap it up for the day. It's uh, a little after five, so I don't know how long they're going to run this today, but we're going to be back tomorrow. We'll be doing more interviews, and uh, Brian and I are sharing a room. <laughs> <laughs> I'll admit it, we are. We, we are. We are. <laughs> um, but yeah, so guys, let's go eat. Sounds good. Sounds thank good. you, sir. It's like Appreciate awesome. it. Word. All right, lead heads. We are back with the Talking Lead Show, and uh, we are on location this week. We're at the FLEOA, and that would be the Federal Law Enforcement Officers Association, 24th National Conference in beautiful St. Charles, Missouri. And uh, I've got some gentlemen joining me. I've got Bryant Halstead with Point Blank Enterprises. Yes, sir. And we got our good buddy Casey Betzel with us with Anterior Alliance. What's up, man? What's up, brother? How you doing? I'm good. Good. Happy to be here. I was uh, excited to hear that you were going to be here, man. I'm happy to made, have made it here, yeah. <laughs> right. But you're, uh, you're bugging out of here, what, tomorrow? Tomorrow, yeah. Leaving yeah. a little early. Yeah. should stay. We're going to have a good time. Have a great time. So, uh, Bryant, with Point Blank, you guys are an armor company, right? Yes, we are. Okay. How would you guys get associated with uh, or affiliated with FLEOA? Um, we've been a sponsor for FLEOA for the last uh, few years, and uh, I first attended a conference uh, two years ago in Milwaukee, and uh, just a, a great group of folks, and uh, definitely wanted to be out here for the for the one here in St. Charles. Cool. So we um, 
I work exclusively in the uh, federal law enforcement market, so this is you know right up right up my alley. Right up your guys. alley, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Very cool. So there are several companies in a, in attendance, and uh, we're going to be doing several interviews for you lead heads out there. Um, I thought this would be a great interview to do with with Bryant with Point Blank uh, because these guys do body armor. Um, and you, you're associated with a couple other companies too, and we'll talk about those uh, right. as well. So tell us about Point Blank Enterprises. So Point Blank has been in the body armor industry since the early 1970s. Uh, we are the lar- largest body armor manufacturer in the world. We uh, specialize in concealable tactical armor, uh, both soft armor and uh, and hard armor, as well as uh, as helmets. And we've branched out in the last few years through some various um, acquisitions and, and mergers to do other things in the uh, personal protective arena. So mm-hmm. um, a recent acquisition of Gould and Goodrich gave us access to holsters and duty gear. First tactical we merged with, so now we're delving into the, the clothing market, tactical clothing, and, okay, and so cool. on. Okay, cool. Yeah. So the, uh, the point blank, um, you guys have a variety of, of different armor plates available. Yeah, it's interesting because Point Blank uh, Enterprises is kind of the result of um, many different companies that were were purchased and now fall under that umbrella. You've got the brands of uh, Point Blank and PACA, uh, Paraclete and Protective Products, who at one time were all individual companies mm-hmm. uh, competing against one another. Right. And uh, as, as we merged, um, we figured out how to keep the strong products in the various brands and we wanted to keep those brands just because so many of them have great brand recognition in the market anyways okay very good so let's talk about some of your armor tell us tell us about your your different lines of armor so the um the point blank line is really our uh our flagship concealable Mm -hmm. and what i like to call kind of off the shelf tactical armor um all of our concealable vests are marketed under point blank they um are great for um, plain clothes folks in an investigative role, quite common in the, uh, in the uniform arena as well. These guys in, in the, uh, Flioa, um, mm-hmm. area typically are, are working in some type of a plain clothes capacity, many of them. Right. So, um, the kinds of things that interest them are a concealable or what I like to call a dual purpose platform where they're wearing a concealable vest or they may be wearing it in an outer, uh, or crossover carrier in an external capacity. Okay. Now, are these available to the general public as well? It depends. Or just so okay. we have a, a distribution network throughout the United States that deals with, and internationally actually, that uh, deals with the, um, the law enforcement market, and we, uh, we sell to that market through those distributors. Now, some of those distributors will, will also sell direct to, to the public mm-hmm. um, unless there's some state law in, in an individual state that pre- you know prevents that. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, they, we do have obviously to state laws apply to this stuff, which it shouldn't. Right. I mean, well, in most why, places. Why wouldn't you know you want to protect your right your citizens? <laughs> well, in most places, um, the way it, the way the law is written is you can own it um, as long as you uh, you know if you commit a crime wearing it, it typically just increases the the penalty of that crime. Right. So um, I'm looking through your catalog here. Again, I'm not I'm not familiar with you guys. I've heard of you, but I, I'm not familiar with everything that you guys do. But you've got um, not only just the armor plates, but there's other things. Like you said you got the helmets. I'm looking at these bags you've got the ex- executive ballistic briefcase. Uh, that's kind of cool. We'll talk about that. Yeah, so that was an idea. Um, we we deal with a lot of folks that are, are working protective details, and typically it's it's difficult to get the the protectee or the the principal to to wear armor. Um, oftentimes they will uh, not want to do that. So the idea behind that is you have someone who's close to the to the protectee um, carrying that that briefcase, and if something happens, they've got something they can rapidly deploy that um, has soft armor protection and also has the capability of carrying a, a rifle plate, so that you could have that shield to get the subject out of the area. Yeah. So what I'm looking at it, uh, it this looks like your typical uh, briefcase. But then it's got a, a piece that drops down. Is yeah, that a ballistic blanket there? Yeah, there's three different pa- uh, panels in there. Okay. And they, they fold over themselves and tuck up inside there so it looks like a briefcase when you're, when you're carrying it. Yeah. And there's a strap that you can uh, pull to rapidly deploy it and extend it out so you've got all three of the panels providing protection along with the, uh, the top panel has the pocket for the, the rifle uh, plate in it. Okay. Can you actually use it as a briefcase too? 
Um, no, it's pretty full of armor. Yeah, awesome. That's good. More armor. <laughs> More armor, yeah. More room not, for armor. Not, not a lot of room to carry anything You don't else. need to have your legal ease in there, do you? No. <laughs> Quick deploy and lose all your papers. But it is. I mean, it's uh, it's disguised as a briefcase, so it's, you know, inconspicuous, uh, so it doesn't stand out and, you know, cause alarms, you know, for people. So Right. Uh, that's kind of cool. I like that. And is that something that's available to, again, I know state, you know, laws and things dictate that, but is that something that... Yeah, that should be available through our distribution network. Anybody can get that? Okay. And there's a, uh, on our website, uh, pointblankenterprises.com, there is a uh, list of where all our distributors are across the country. Okay. Now, you've got um, you've got the shields, too. Uh, that's something that I've always been interested in, are the uh, the big ballistic shields. Right. So that uh, that shield line we we launched a few years ago, and um, it has really taken off. So the the whole idea behind and there's different philosophies, right? So there's certain people that use uh, shields as a way to protect the people in their their tactical stack and 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 protect their movements and so on. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's also a, a mentality that a shield is an individual protective item. So if you think back to um, as far back as, say, Roman times, right? Mm-hmm. You, an individual warrior um, went out there to the battlefield with a sword and a shield. That was right. part of their kit. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, at some point, um, when we developed firearms, we somehow decided that we didn't need a shield anymore. Right. Um, not not sure that I follow the logic there, but um, we've got a, uh, a, a pretty uh, reputable program, and a gentleman that does training for us that, that – shows folks how to incorporate using not only a handgun with the shield, which is pretty common, mm-hmm. but a long gun with the shield. Oh, okay. And, you know, when, like when, a shotgun? Yeah, um, primarily like an AR or, okay. or uh, uh, some weapon system similar to that. Yeah, um, semi-auto, something. You know, something that would be your, you know, your personal um, weapon that you're using on a tactical team or whatnot and just teaches you how to use that shield in conjunction with that weapon and still be able to deal with, Things that might occur, like stoppages, malfunctions, so on. Yeah. Um, while you're using that shield as as cover and like and Captain America, man. When Captain America throws his mighty shield, all those who chose to oppose his shield must yield. If he's led to a fight and a duel is due, then the red and the white and the blue come through when Captain America throws his mighty shield. Yeah. Heck yeah. yeah, and and I got to tell you, when I when I first heard the concept, I was a little taken aback. But uh, after seeing how it works, it's um, it, it's it's pretty pretty effective. Yeah. Now these, I'm sure, are just for military law enforcement, right? The shields can can civilians own those? I'm not sure how the law works on those. I don't yeah. see why not. But yeah, I don't um, I don't know specifically if there's anything that prevents that. Again, yeah, he's most, not an attorney. I'm yeah, most, here. We're most not of this stuff is you Check know as long as you don't, don't use it to to further some criminal act. In most cases, you can own it. Yeah. Okay. What do these things uh, run price wise on these shields? They uh, they range anywhere uh, retail price of you know a couple thousand dollars uh, for a lower end shield would be somewhere in the um, three to three to four thousand dollar range uh-huh. um, and that's a like a level three A plus shield or that'll stop all of the handgun rounds. Okay. Um, when you get up into like a level three plus shield, we have a trifecta and that will stop um, some of the more um, threatening rounds out there, like the M855 Green Tip, mm-hmm. um, that shield retails for over sixteen thousand dollars. Oh, good lord! Yeah, man. So the average Joe's <laughs> probably not buying that to uh, to protect himself. That's why I don't see people outside with the shield. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's one reason why. Right. I don't think they quite cost that much back in the, the Viking days. Uh, no, of course they were wood. <laughs> they were made from wood. Then. Right. Yeah, What's they, the materials you're using on these? Can you talk about that? So, it's not um, a secret squirrel kind of thing. I think. Well, some of it's proprietary, but um, just as a you know broad brush answer for that, the um, polyethylenes um, or Dyneema and, and things of that nature are used in uh, a lot of our plates and, and shields as well. Yeah. And weight wise, um, I'm looking at one here. Uh, you've got one at 17 pounds. Right. Uh, and I guess they go up from there as far as what they weigh. And 
Right. The, uh, that trifecta I mentioned a minute ago, that, um, that comes in right at 35 pounds. Okay. So you, uh, you can identify the guy on the team that, uh, <laughs> that, that carries that thing because he's got arms he's, that look like Popeye. And right. The, and the, and yeah. He sounds, he sounds like he's grunting when he's carrying it. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> Hold on. Hold on. You mean you sweet giant? <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold off! Hold off! Hold off! What have you guys done with uh, weight with regard to the armor? I know there's been a lot of things done in the last few years to reduce weights on 3A level stuff. So we're always working with the ballistic uh, fabric manufacturers to uh, find out new innovations that they're they're working on and so on. Um, And we've got a, a whole team of guys that are constantly working on putting together um, different packages because it's um, you know armor is is interesting in that for the most part all of the armor manufacturers out there have access to all the same ingredients right right now there might be some specific relationships with certain comp- companies where there's some exclusivity and so on uh, but everybody for the most part has access to the same stuff so it's all you know what recipe you know you put together how you use those ingredients to create that end product and um, we've we've had good success in the uh, the last few years working on uh, lighter weight, more flexible products. And you know when when NIJ came out, which is uh, National Institute of Justice came out with a new um, 06 standard, you know everybody had to go back to the drawing board. And what you initially saw is armor weights got heavier and thicker right. to accommodate that more robust standard. And now um, with innovations in in the various materials, you're starting to see those come back down. And we've got you know, level 3A armor now that is weight and um, flexibility that, that that's like level twos that we saw you know, eight years ago. Yeah. Well, is this a, is this a three? That's a level three that's, plate? Yeah, that plate's a level yeah, three. Yeah, so the one I'm holding right now, this is uh, one of those uh, composite right. uh, plates, lightweight, light. yeah. very lightweight. I guess this is a, a buoyant, a buoyant it, one yeah, as d- well? Yeah, it does have some po- uh, positive buoyancy. Buoyancy, okay. Uh, what kind of is this level three? You said That's, level, yeah, three. level three. Level three. So that to be certified as a level three, it has to stop uh, six rounds of M80 ball, which is a uh, uh, hard ball uh, 308 round. Right. What kind of coating do you have over these? What that, is this coating? That is um, a polyurea coating, mm-hmm. similar to uh, a bed liner that you would see in your truck. Yeah, like Rhino lining or yeah, something Line-X, like that. Something like that, exactly. Okay. Does that come standard on all your plates? It does. Um, we historically had done some Cordura plates, but we found this is a, a more durable coating. Um, does give you some water repellent properties, uh-huh. and water and, and ballistic materials don't mix well. Right. You want to protect them from moisture. Yeah. So uh, I know in the past, as far as like dropping your plates, that it would compromise. It could could compromise them. Is, right. is that still a, a factor with this type of material? So the polyethylene, not so much. Uh, there's not a lot in there that can break. I, I guess if you dropped it from a high enough uh, spot or it hit something that could uh, cut into the edge or something, there, there could be some damage there. Yeah. The, the dropping comes into play more when you're dealing with something that's got a ceramic strike face right. um, and the potential damage for that, uh, that, that ceramic. Um, and that's still a concern, right? That's one of the reasons that the new... NIJ test incorporated a, uh, a drop test into their uh, plate testing. Okay. And it's also why you've seen in the past few years the plates get a little thicker. Yeah. Because they there's foam um, in many of these. Now, this, this is not one that has ceramic in it, but there's foam protecting that ceramic so that it can sustain that drop test and, and not, not damage the ceramic. Okay. What uh, So what materials are in with this? Is it all just that... Um, composite material there. There's some. Uh, it feels like all, there's something. Yeah, on the front you can feel of it. there's. Well, in the uh, in the back, there's also some foam. Yeah, it's soft on the back. Um, it's hard on the front. Yeah, and you can you can. That's there to help with back face deformation, that blunt force trauma. Yeah. You know, the the polyethylene and and uh, those materials that are on the strike face of the plate. That's going to stop the round, but there's still going to be that force that's transmitted to the person that's wearing it so, so it's not going to be completely painless like people think <laughs> no the, the the good news is it's going to hurt yeah you're yeah. going to know it huh right you're well, going to know you got shot exactly so um 
this is the chest plate here. Obviously, I mean, you've got the backs and the side plates and all that that, that yeah. go with it. When you sell uh, sell these, do you guys sell the vest also? We do. Um, they can all be purchased individually. So um, that plate, that's a 10 by 12 plate, which is standard in, in the law enforcement community. Um, so many folks may already have plates that that you know they want to put in a, a new vest. So yeah. Uh, but oftentimes we do sell them as a as a kit as, as a kit. well. Okay, a full set, so to speak. Uh, what mm-hmm. price range were we talking about? Uh, retail on that is about eight, a little over eight hundred dollars. Okay, that's and again we talk retail. Um, that's for one one plate. That's for one plate. Yeah. Okay, and that's the lightweight that we're talking about. On that's the level three. That's the our, level three. our model number one zero two six zero. Is is that does, exist. does it have a name? Do you call it something? Um, the one zero two six zero is it really okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> level level three plate, um, and we do have one that's a little bit lighter than that. But um, oh, really? Yeah, because that's like really light. I guess it's going to be yeah, more one, expensive, isn't it? Yeah. It, yes. Yeah. I think we, we were talking <laughs> earlier that uh, price and weight. You know, the lighter you go, the price follows that. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Um, the uh, the other thing about level three that I always want to make sure we call out when when somebody calls me and asks for a level three plate, I I always um, try to understand what they're going to use it for and 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 also make sure that they understand what it'll stop. Yeah. Because um, while it'll stop the M80 ball all day long. The MA55 green tip um, will go right through that the like five butter. six round. Yeah. It, yeah, it'll just you know, it, I, I'm sure it'll slow it down slightly, but it'll punch right through that plate. Yeah. So um, you got to step up to like a level three plus plate. Yeah. To be able to stop that let's, round. Let's let's do that if you don't mind, just to educate our audience that may not be familiar with body armor. Let's talk about the different levels and as you're going up. What you know? What that gets you? Okay. So soft body armor is um, level two A, level two, and level three A. So level three A being the the most robust, giving you the greatest amount of protection. Okay. So level two A, the test rounds are uh, forty caliber and a nine millimeter. Mm-hmm. Level two is nine millimeter and three fifty seven magnum. And level 3A is 357 SIG and 44 Magnum. Okay. So ideally, you know, it'll stop anything below that, right, velocity and, and, and so on. Right. Um, but soft armor is not designed to give you any protection against rifle rounds. To, to step up to rifle rounds, you're talking about a level 3 or a level 4. Mm-hmm. And the level 3, like I said, is the uh, the M80 ball, the 308 round. And level 4 is a um, 30 caliber armor piercing round. Okay, and typically, what what are level fours made of? Uh, level fours and level three pluses both have to have some type of a, a ceramic strike face, mm-hmm. and then behind that, there'll be either a um, some type of an aramid armor um, or a polyethylene or something to help to to catch that round and mm-hmm. then um, assist with mitigating the back face defamation. Yeah. Now. It's time for the talking lead back to fight the myths. Now you can take a level three, and then you can add another layer of armor to make it level four protection, right? No, so it's the level four and and the level three plus. It's all in the strike face. It's all in the strike right? face. You can add more behind it, and it's unless you put a level four plate behind it, it's mm-hmm. not going to make it a level four. Um, it's funny you say that though, because I've had that question asked before. Bo- body armor is not multiplication. Okay. Right? You, you can't add them together you and, can't and, add, them together. and add, add greater protection. The one thing that is an exception to that is there are plates that are referred to as standalone plates and plates that are in conjunction. Like all your military plates, the ESAPI plates that are issued to military folks, those are all in conjunction plates. And what that means is they, they are tested in conjunction with a soft armor package. And they are designed to work with that package behind them. Now they'll, mm-hmm. Um, ideally they'll, they'll probably stop the threats that they're rated for by themselves where they fail is in that back face defamation because that's what the soft armor is, is back there to help mitigate. So they, you, yeah. you got to have that to, to make that system work. So, and that's a, that's another thing you gotta, gotta be wary of out there is understanding what kind of plates you're buying. Cause there's people walking around with in conjunction plates, wearing them by themselves with no soft armor behind them, thinking that they have They've got know, that full level. on protection and, you know, they may or may not right so where can people find you guys 
So the easiest way to blank. find find point blank and and all of our distribution network is um, on our website uh, pointblankenterprises.com. Okay. And there's links to all the brands associated with Point Blank now. And run through those again. You got uh, so you got you got Point Blank, you got Paraclete, you Paraclete. got Taka, you got um, Protective Products. Now uh, Gould and Goodrich, First Tactical, and our most recent acquisition is uh, United Shield. Okay. Man, you guys are just buying everybody up. <laughs> we are looking to... Want to buy a podcast? <laughs> Blow it up. <laughs> you want to add a podcast to your arsenal? You know, I, I'm not... That, that might fit in. I'd have to uh, I have I, to throw that throw that against the wall and see if it sticks. I know, <laughs> I know. So you and I were talking earlier, and I know the lead heads have heard me talk about this before, um, and this is my idea, so nobody can steal it. So if you come out with it, it's mine. I'm going to sue you. <laughs> but uh, a a bulletproof cooler. So we were talking about that, and this is kind of the the stuff that I was, you know, you could put that in there. Is that to save the beer? Is that your idea? So yeah, so you know, you redneck parties get out of hand sometimes, and <laughs> you know they shoot the cooler up. So <laughs> that's a valid point. I hadn't hadn't thought about it. You know, we were thinking of you know personal protection, but actually, right, we're actually maybe thinking it about is to saving make, lives. Make sure to save the beer. Yeah, so after marketing. the firefight's over, just you can, marketing. So yeah, just pops you, into you, my. You own. can still have a beer. You can still have a cold beer. Yeah, right. Yeah, um, but no, I mean that. It, Mainly for our you know, military, law enforcement, just to have a, a whole other level of protection, you know, when they're out and doing combat, and there's other things that they use coolers for too. But uh, uh, I mean, why not? Why not have a? Why not? If you could do it, and you know, cost-effective way. But I mean, this right here is 800 bucks. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at that right there. So you would need, you know, depending on the size of the cooler, you know, two, four, six, six plates, you know, on a small cooler. That's about a Yeti cooler then, cost wise. So then, 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 yeah, then you're right up the alley of a Yeti cooler. So <laughs> yeah, when, you know, if you're know gonna, if, if you're gonna pay that amount for it anyway. And I don't know if I mentioned this earlier or not, but um, you know, pricing the the prices that I've thrown out for you guys are retail prices. Yeah. You know, guys that are in our, our federal law enforcement community and our local law enforcement community, that those aren't the prices that those folks are, are paying. Sure. Um, based on quantity. Well, I mean, you got to have an MSRP. On. I mean, yeah, everybody understands that's, that's MSRP, and you can go out and you know, there's deals that can be yeah. can be had. So. But yeah, I think, uh, I think your idea is, uh, is, is interesting. You know, I, I, anything that, that you're using in your environment that you can at a, uh, at just a like reasonable the price, case. you know, you know, just armor like it up, case. you know, so that when you're standing there and a, a blast occurs or somebody starts shooting at you, you've got protection all around you. Right. I've heard of, I've heard of, uh, somebody working on like desk, bulletproof desk for, uh, schools. Um, I've seen that. We've, them- uh, we've done some stuff with, um, uh, judges' benches in uh, in courtrooms. Right. Yeah. You know, because uh, they're a hot, they're a hot target. Appa- apparently, <laughs> yes, they, they they do cause some angst with folks, and they, they, for some reason, somebody might want to hurt them. Yeah. yeah. You can talk anytime if you got. No, I'm good. A question. I'm checking out his product. Kelly. Okay. All right. <laughs> you got a shopper over there, man. All right. We may we may have a, a sale for you right there. <laughs> I've already talked to him earlier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, um, where, where are you from? You told me where you live. So I, I'm in Virginia. You live in Virginia. Yep. Our, uh, our manufacturing facility is in, uh, Pompano Beach. Uh, that's our, our main location. Then we also have another location in, uh, Miami Lakes. That's where our hard armor is manufactured. Okay. So those, uh, those folks, as we speak, are, uh, hunkering down in preparation for the arrival <laughs> Come of on, the, uh, Irma, Irma or, yeah. Yeah. Irma, Irma. Irma. yeah she's not a welcome visitor, but she's coming anyways. <laughs> yeah, she's I hear coming. she's a bitch. So <laughs> yeah, so our our facility is actually closed guys. down at uh, at two o'clock Eastern today, and uh, if, if, batting down the hatches. You know, God, God uh, hopefully nothing crazy is going to happen down there, damage wise, and uh, so they'll all be safe and, and right. open back up again first of the week. Yeah, well, our thoughts and prayers with everybody down there, just like in Houston. Um, I got to ask you. Uh, do you carry? Absolutely. Okay. Got your permit there in Virginia? I do. Okay. I do. Um, Good for you. Yeah, big What pro- do you carry? So, primarily Glocks. Um, nice. Either a, uh, My a boy. And, and I say, you know, I say Glocks plural because, you know, depending upon what I'm wearing, um, you know, I might have to go with a 43 or, or a 19. Right. So I'll, um, and, and sometimes a 17. So, yeah. you know, it just, just depends. Um, and I'm, I'm prior law enforcement too. So, okay. So you, um, you rock the 40, don't you? Um, no, no, not doing no. the 40. I, uh, you know, I got rid of all my forties. Um, why, not, why would you do that? Nine, mm. nine millimeters come such a long way in the, uh, 
as far as the but think about how far 40 can so. go too yeah i don't know yeah. it just it hadn't hadn't been there and um you know with uh with the fbi making the transition back to nine millimeter i mean that's you're just a follower man that's that's just evidence um and that's just proof just because the fbi uh, does I, it everybody's doing it right ammo choices it, ammo, a, choices. ammo choices and the uh you know why they the did that you know, you know why they did that don't you what's that they got a better deal on the nine millimeter. Yeah, it's you know? cheaper. That's, <laughs> it's cheaper. That's it's why lighter. They did it. That's one opinion. and it works. <laughs> <laughs> greater, Everybody knows greater, the government goes with the lowest bid. Greater ma- magazine capacity, uh, faster and lighter more ac- accurate subsequent shots, um, because it just returns to target quicker. The recoil is not as as bad as, I the, as the forty. I I used the forty for years. That's what I carried in law enforcement. Yeah. Um, I like the forty. The uh, the nine millimeter. There's more of them. And um, there are you know, ter- terminal ballistics wise, they're performing at that same level as a as a forty or even better in some cases. So, depending upon what round you're carrying, it. right? Yeah. So I didn't get rid of the forties. I just did the nine conversion barrel. Is that just? Yeah. Took my twenty three and got the nine conversion. Got the nine I got both. Barrel. Yeah. You just got it covered. I like I them all. Yeah, but yeah, I, yeah. I personally carry a twenty three and a twenty seven. Okay. So I yeah, like I had, forty rounds. That's those. what I cut my teeth on, you know. Kind of. Yeah. But I like I like the nine millimeter rounds too. The uh, the Gen fives are out. Uh, last episode uh, or episode before last, we talked about uh, the new features of the Gen five. I've not seen one of those in in person yet. I've seen the new FBI guns, but uh, have not seen the the Gen five yet. Yeah, they're nice. Um, they they nice. did away with the the finger grooves. I saw that. With that That's um, good, the triggers are not a lot smoother now. It's a mm-hmm. real nice trigger on it. Uh, tapered the front, which, you know, I, either way, I take it or leave that. Uh, the barrel. Barrel's a big deal. And then Ta- they, tapered the front of the slide, so like, looks like the, what's the, 30, the slide, 30, yeah, the tapered the slide. slide. Looks like the, uh, the Gen 426. Okay. I got you. 27s. Okay. Yeah, the smaller, the smaller. They did it in the Gen 4. I got you. They didn't do it in the, uh, the bigger ones, but yeah, the, and the barrel, um, they set the, um, rifling back further, so it's closer to the feed ramp. Okay. It's more accurate. Pretty nice. They, overall, there's like 20 changes they did. I should have brought it, but I didn't want to go through the hassle of checking it at the airport. And right. <laughs> doing, <laughs> all, doing all that crap. But, yeah, just more time. Yeah. Are you a hunter? Do you hunt? You know, I, uh, I, I haven't hunted in many years. I uh, just don't, don't have time to, to do that. I, yeah. uh, as long as the, um, the supermarket down the street has still got meat and stock, mm. I've got other things I'm doing. So, yeah. Um, Always enjoyed hunting. Hunting did a lot of bu- uh, bird hunting growing up, but uh, oh, okay. No, haven't haven't been hunting in a number Maybe of years. Hunting. So, what's the craziest thing that you've seen somebody do or heard somebody do with your body armor? <laughs> um, you know, it 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 cracks me up when I go into some of these departments and folks will. Um, I had uh, you know, a lot of departments have mandatory body armor uh, policies. You have to wear it, and right. um, you know, I've had guys show up with just the carrier on with no ballistic panels in it to get fitted for their new armor and they're not wearing the panels. I'm like, where, where's your, where's your ballistic panels? They're uncomfortable. So I don't wear them. <laughs> the vest looks <laughs> cool though. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I, I bet they're comfortability. Not, I, I bet they're not as uncomfortable as that round. They're designed mm-hmm. to stop. Your comfort and is you more, against. yeah, more important than your, your safety, huh? Yeah. Yeah. That, and, uh, you know, it never fails. You'll have folks, you know, wearing their vest backwards and, and, you know, things of that nature. Upside down. I haven't seen the upside down yet. But, well, maybe down maybe yet. with a plate. I still haven't seen that, but that that could happen. Yeah. Well, I mean, this could also be. But it's like the concealable yeah, vest, you know. You it's, they're, they they got a nice little notch in the front, you know, for your throat, your neck, and uh, yeah. Inevitably, somebody's going to put that thing on backwards. <laughs> it happens. Very cool. So you guys make sure you check out Point Blank. Um, is it Industries or Enterprise? Enterprise. Enterprise. Point Blank Enterprise dot com. Right. Yes, sir. All right. Point blank. All right. We appreciate you joining us. Thanks for having me, man. I enjoyed it. Yeah, absolutely. If you want to hang out, we're going to do another interview right here. You're, you're up. So joining us now, we've got Ray Bryant. Brand. 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's why I need cards, man. Let me That's take this off your card. Oh, I like that. You, you can leave it, man. Feel free. Feel free to leave that. <laughs> Forget that here. He's with uh, Mid American Munitions. Yes, sir. And uh, you're based out of Missouri? Yes, southwest Missouri, Neosho. So you got to get up on the microphone. you got to get up on it. you got to get up on that guy. Don't be afraid of the big black thing. <laughs> no comments. <laughs> Keep so, it clean. So, Ray, tell us about Mid-America Munitions. 
We are an ammunition manufacturer. Uh, we bring a line of yeah. remand ammo. 9 millimeter, 40, 45, 300 blackout, 556, 308, and soon to be 65 Creedmoor. Okay, so you're uh, ramping up the variety there. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And this is all remand. It is. Okay, so you're not doing any new? Not yet. That's at the end of the year. Okay, so that's coming. Mm -hmm. Very nice. How long have you guys been around? What are we, March? March of this year? You started in March? March. So you're brand spanking new. We're brand spanking new. We're spanking ass. There you go, man. <laughs> that's it's awesome. Yeah, really they're doing awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Now, are you repping these guys? Am I repping them? Yeah. I mean, are you are you selling their stuff, too? Yeah, we're all selling each other stuff, man. Okay. We like are, that shirt on We are on a us. member of Antares Alliance. All right. Well, welcome aboard. Thank you. Did you do the lifetime membership? Perfect. Yeah, we did the corporate membership. We went down to Montana and got to meet all the guys and gals and have a good time. So uh, you guys are cranking out uh, the pistol and the rifle ammunition. Yes. Uh, what, what certain, you do any special loads with those or just your typical? Right now it's kind of your typical. Uh, we just brought to the market the Nazar of Armageddon, which is the 110 grain. Okay. I love the way they describe that. Violent expansion. Violent expansion. <laughs> yeah. I don't know exactly how violent yet, because the only thing we shot was a pinata unicorn stuffed with tannerite. Really? Yeah, it's pretty awesome. That's pretty violent. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so what? tell us about that round. I mean, the 110 kind of speaks for itself with the Varmageddon. It's out in the market now. It's only a couple people making it. Uh -huh. Our lineup kind of goes 100 grain frangible, 110 Varmageddon. 135 grain rapid expansion Sierra, 300 blackout. 300 blackout. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, 150 grain full metal jacket. Then we brought to, uh, to market 150 grain plated, which is a lot cheaper. Um, 208 AMAX subsonic. Okay. 220 open tip match king subsonic. Okay. 220 plated subsonic. And I think that's it for right now. I think we're done with the lineup of 300 blackout. Now we're moving into 556 for the rifle rounds of. Uh, 55 full metal jacket, 55 soft point. Uh, we're getting ready to do a, I think it's a 73 hollow point boat tail. Okay. For some of the guys that do our long range. Yeah. Um, and a 75 grain, um, ballistic tip. Nice. So we're getting ready to bring that. Are you going to be, uh, getting in a 308? You're going to start doing yep, 308? Yep. 308 right now. We're just doing ball. Okay. Uh, we're going to be doing some ELD rounds and 6.5 Creedmoor ELD rounds, but those are going to be coming here in a couple months. We're right now we're in kind of development phase. It's going to be remand brass. So we're taking one shot military brass and turning it into six five Creedmoor. Okay. What are your prices? Awesome. Let's say on a five five six box of five five six. What's we're at? Uh, I want to say what is it two two ninety a thousand. Okay. Fifty five grade. Okay. Soft points somewhere around three twenty a thousand. How about your we blackout? Blackout. We got as low as which happens to be my favorite round. I love the three hundred blackout. We do have some that comes out. Uh, it sells out so fast, but we got it as little as twenty or two ninety, twenty nine cents a piece. Two ninety a thousand. Really? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I need to check you guys out then because I love shooting the three hundred blackout. So well, and I like we. their. I like what you guys have done with the um, with the way you've set the lineup on the remand side. So a lot of the you know a lot of the remand across the country. A lot of people doing it, obviously, mm -hmm. but they kind of shy away from putting uh, premium bullets in there. A lot of the time, mm -hmm. but, you know, try to keep the price obviously down as low as they can. But, yeah. but in the in the mind of a reloader, they're always loading their hunting rounds on reman ammo. Yeah. Um, and it's a, it's you know it's something that's become a scary term to people. But yeah, um, I love your guys' lineup. I think it's I think it's full and I think it's good and it keeps the prices down and and uh, helps the shooters. Yeah, I mean, for somebody been, who shoots a lot, a lot, yeah, I mean sometimes you just yeah. want you know target rounds. You, know, you just want stuff that you can go out there and you don't want to have to you know, spend an arm and a leg to to get it. Yeah, don't want to break the bank. Yeah, that's for sure. Absolutely, because you know you got to get ammo to shoot. Did you just spit up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Do you have a bib. Uh, no. I, uh, I remember when I started drinking too. I, I, I missed my mouth. I'm not sure how that's possible. <laughs> well, you got that beard that's covering There's it up. Camouflage. Too. That's what one, it was. One hell of a beard. That is a way. nice beard. Since yeah. we're since thank we're you. audio, you got to point it out. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna post. I got a nice Polaroid of. Uh, of us, me and Bryant. Did you get my good side? I got your good side, yeah. Full on, right there. Yeah, yeah. We did a little selfie. You didn't see me doing the I, I chick did. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So um so how can people get in touch with you guys? Mid America Munitions. Mid America Munitions dot com. Bay Bay. Or they can call us at eight seven seven go mid am. Eight seven seven go mid am. Correct. They're getting ready to open a storefront. Uh huh. Storefront's a physical storefront on Monday. Okay. Get a website um, store now. Mm -hmm. It'll be more Alliance products showing up on there all the time. Very Absolutely. Cool. Getting ready to bring to market a suppressor line and a rifle line and AR-10 platform. 
Okay. 65 Creedmoor and 308. Just keep your eyes open for that. Facebook, Mid American Munitions. There you go. Are or you on Instagram? We are. On Instagram Not as active as, well? as we should be. Not as active as Casey. The <laughs> rifle that <laughs> you've got out there today, is that the one you're... That is the one we are going to bring the to market. That's Creedmoor? a 6.5 Creedmoor, correct. That is a beautiful piece Thank of you. work. Yeah. Nice, right. I'm digging yeah. it. It's like a 20-inch so, um, stainless heavy, barrel. Yep, heavy profile. Heavy profile. It wasn't that heavy, though. I mean, no, it's not too heavy. It, it felt pretty decent. I, mean, I didn't even notice when yeah. I was picking it up. So I I haven't shot it yet. I just picked it up day before yesterday in the evening. Yeah. So I haven't. I've just 10 rounds into the, the test can to make sure that we were cycling and everything was good. So let's talk so, about it real quick. Talk about the... The rifle, man. I mean, um, you're telling me all the cool. I mean, it's got titanium. Everything is just top-notch quality, from the from the muzzle brake to the barrel to the to the rail. Um, titanium coated bolt carrier group on this particular model. Titanium coated trigger. It's a drop-in trigger set at three pounds. Um, it's just the details down to the the slide release or to the to the bolt catch release to. Yeah. To the charge and handle. I mean, the details that go in. Yeah, I was it. looking at it and I was like, you know, five grand. And you're like, no, no, <laughs> it's going to come to market starting at 1850, 1850 for a six, five Creedmoor with a titanium trigger, titanium bolt, man. Also available in 308. Also available. In th- okay. Mm-hmm. Nice. Those are the two calibers we're going to carry. Very good. Not going to get into the saturated 15 market. Oh yeah. No. Well, why would you, you know? Nothing to it. I think a lot of people are going with that six, five Creedmoor now. Yeah. Here a lot of people. We just had a, uh. Uh, famous sniper on last week, Charlie Melton. Awesome guy. Awesome dude. Uh, and he's big on the 6.5 Creedmoor. Yeah. I can't wait for him to see my rifle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You may not get it back. <laughs> Charlie's a big boy too. Yeah. Yeah. He's like 6.5. I will be able to take this out next week and actually give some feedback on how it shoots. Okay. Um, we're going to, we're going to give it a shot at a thousand and twelve fifty. You're more than welcome to come see. to Tennessee. I'll shoot it with you. You got a range that long? Uh, yeah, we got we got land out there. I might hold you to that. We got land. We can make that work. We can always go down to Altair and do it too. What's that? That's an awesome place down in Florida. I After the hurricane. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. Or really it's, quick before. See if it's still still standing. Or yeah. during that would be kind of exciting. Fight uh, wind conditions. So I'll take a picture of that uh, that six five Creedmoor for you guys, um, lead heads. Uh, so check it out on the website uh, as you're listening to the show. Awesome. Yeah. When are people going to be able to get the rifle, right? We are looking at, we're waiting on our variants to come back right now. That's kind of the, the prototype model that we had built for us. Uh, variants paperwork should be back, I'm, I'm hoping, within 30 to 45 days. Very cool. Awesome. That's definitely worth the price, no question about that. You can tell by looking because the quality is there. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I, I was looking at it, and you were telling me everything about it, and I was like, five grand, you know, yeah. and I wasn't joking. Yeah. You know, I, was, I was expecting it to be somewhere around there. Right. But. Yeah, eighteen hundred. I cannot wait to get it in people's hands to test it out. Um, get some reviews. So you're doing all the serial. How do you serialize? What numbers are you putting on? Are you just doing like we haven't number decided type yet. Thing? So any feedback would be fantastic. I want z- double double oh seven. Double oh seven. Yeah, I want double oh seven. <laughs> I can make that happen. I think you should do lead head and then numbers after it. Lead head and then numbers. Yeah, that's I was your thinking Snake number. River or something like that or Antares. AA, A, my AA10, and Terrace and Lines 10. 2A. 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 Hey, that's, that's 2 catchy. 2A. That's, that's catchy. That's clever. Like Second Amendment. Two just twice. like Just like just Second like Amendment. Second Amendment isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Very cool, guys. Appreciate you uh, taking the time to be on. And uh, we're going to be back with some more interviews, so stay tuned, Leadheads. Awesome. Thanks, Marty. I'm a little jacked up on that latte. That went down really smooth, didn't it? Mm, that was good. Yeah, I need to get food in my belly because I, I got the caffeine jitters going on over here. Between two rock stars and that, I'm needing food in my belly soon. I can go streaking through the quad. <laughs> <laughs> that wraps up another episode of the Talking Lead Show. Appreciate you guys tuning in. And if you haven't done so, if you're listening to us on iTunes, please go and leave us a rating and some feedback. We'd greatly appreciate that. And another big thanks to all the sponsors of Talking Lead, Right On Optics, the official optics of Talking Lead. Check them out at rightonusa.com. Modern Spartan Systems, optimize your firearms with Modern Spartan Systems products. ModernSpartanSystems.com, Frontier Tactical. Check them out at FrontierTactical.com. X-Steel Targets. The best, most affordable 
AR500 steel targets on the market today. Check them out at xsteeltargets.com. High Threat Concealment. Check them out at highthreatconcealment.com, providing a wide variety of retention solutions for your firearms and accessories. Glock, the official carry of Talking Lead. Check them out at us.glock.com. And just another quick reminder on that Survey Monkey poll that we're going to be doing to select the new Leadhead logo for our new line of shirts and patches with 1776 United. Check our website for the Survey Monkey, our social media post, and of course over at 1776united.com where you guys can vote on the three finalists for the new Leadhead logo. Until next episode, Leadheads, as always, keep your loved ones close. And those firearms closer.